Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL query training session with Learn at NoStar. In today's session, we are going to write a query in which we are going to identify any overlapping date records in a table. This will also be relevant for identifying any invalid data and slowly changing dimension type 2 where you have start dates and end dates to define a date period range and you might have some invalid data if your start dates and end dates are not correctly populated. So let's get started. So I'm going to be working with a table called a uh, dim employee table. So it's a dimension table if we're talking about a data warehouse and we have some columns in this table. So we are basically focusing on some descriptive columns like the first name, last name, title, department and phone. And then we have got two columns called the start date and the end date that identify the date period. So if we just run a select query on this table and if we take a deeper look at this record here then we can see that the start date of this first record is 5 7 2007 which is perfectly fine the end date of this record is 2009 12 28 and since this record is end dated there is a new record which is active which is identified by any end date being null and we can see that the start date of the next record, which is the active record, is actually 27th of December 2009. So, for this particular day, which is 27th of December 2009 or 28th of December 2009, there is an overlap happening between this record at row number 4 and the next record at row number 5. And... Uh, the attribute that has changed as we can see is the phone number over here so to identify any such records for which the start date or the end date might not be correctly populated and which might be resulting in overlapping records we need to write a query now to understand the logic behind writing this query let's take once more a look at this data and for that we can take a look at this particular figure over here. So since we need to compare these two records, these two records belong to the same table. So the first thing that we would need to do is perform a self-join because now we are comparing records from the same table. So let's say the first record we call it um, we call it as the data in the table by the alias of emp and the second record would end up in the alias emp1 now to identify these records we will need to frame a where query which would catch any such overlapping incidents to frame that uh, where query we need to understand exactly how the start dates and end dates are related to each other between these two records so again going back to the first record that we're talking about which has been end dated and that is, falls into the alias emp the start date for that record is 2007-75 perfectly fine and the end date for that record is 2009-12-28. Now we are going to identify the relationship between the start dates and the end dates of the EMP alias table and the start date of the EMP1 table. So let's take a look again. The start date of EMP1 table is 2009-12-27, which is greater than the start date of the EMP table. And the start date again of the EMP1 table is less than the end date of the EMP table. So what we're basically saying is that the start date over here, this start date, okay, uh, let me zoom once again. The start date of 27-12-2009 is greater than the start date of 5th July 2007, but it is less than the end date of 2009 12 28 and these start dates and end dates we are comparing from the emp alias now, now this might seem a little confusing so let's go back and frame our query and then try to understand this relationship once again okay so now since we said that we need to perform a self-join let's define another alias from the same table and we would call is as dbo.dem employee emp one and then we have to define a where clause which would basically define the join condition between these two tables so the first thing that we need to make sure is that we are looking at the records for the same employee so if you have an employee key on based on which you can join the records use that key if you do not have that 
for example in this case we don't have a key so we're going to join on first name and last name anything which identifies a unique business record in the table so for that first the first condition would be joining to identify the same set of employee so employee dot first name equal to employee one dot first name and employee dot last name equal to emp one dot last name so that makes sure that i am working on the same set of the employees now the next conditions that i'm going to add are based on the interpretation that we just did uh, and comparing by comparing the start dates and end dates of these two particular records so starting with amp okay let's put down amp start date okay amp start date we said is less than the start date of amp1 which is the correct thing to write over here so what we're going to say is less than the start date of amp1 right and now the basic the main comparison that we're going to do let's go back to a figure once is based on the employee one star date so we are going to identify the relationships of the employee one star date with relation to the start date and end date of the previous record which is the expired record so we are to frame the relationship with respect to the amp one dot start date over here which is the relationship that we just identified that this one employee one dot start date is greater than the start date of the employee alias day records but it is less than the end date of the employee record which basically identifies the invalid records because ideally it should have been greater than or equal to the end date of the employee record so going back to our query again we have to frame one more condition which would be for the employee one dot start date so employee now in this case we are going to compare it with the employee dot end date okay so employee dot end date is 28 12 2009 and this is greater than the employee one dot start date so that is the condition we are going to add over here employee one dot start date all right so this is a condition now let's run this query and see what are our output results this is the result that we are getting that is this one employee for which we had an invalid record and you would get because we uh, took our alias employee in the description fields we'll get the expired record for that employee so this is how you can identify any overlapping date period ranges in your table by simply comparing the start dates and end dates of those two records and framing a condition where you can identify any invalid record so i hope that you found this video useful if you did then please do not forget to like comment and share this video and please also do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel for more tutorials on sql queries thanks a lot for watching goodbye